In the largest clinical study uh, trial, trial, I'm sorry, ever conducted, 401,974 children were randomly assigned to two groups. The treatment group consisted of 2,129 children given the stock, <clears throat> the SALK vaccine for polio, and the other 200,745 children were given a placebo. Among those in the treatment group, 33 developed polio, and among those in the placebo group, 115 developed polio. If we want to use the methods for testing a claim about two population proportions to test the claim that the rate of polio is less for the children with the Salk vaccine, um, are the requirements for a hypothesis test satisfied? And then explain. So this is kind of a book answer. We can go to page, well, let me get the page for you. So on page 443, this is chapter 9, section 9.2. They've got the requirements <clears throat> that sample proportions are from two simple random samples that are independent, and uh, these are all the you know these, it's kind of clear because they're different children um, in the in the group groups. Samples are independent if the samples selected from one population are not related to or somehow naturally paired with the samples from the other population. They made uh, one population the control group and one the treatment group, one with a placebo for control. Uh, for each of the two samples, there are at least five successes and at least five failures. And um, we have 33 developing polio from the treatment group and 115 from the, uh, the control group or the placebo. So uh, let's just read through our options here. It just uh, looks like a direct book answer, choice C. Let's do number 27. Okay, in the study, uh, in a study of treatments for very painful cluster headaches, 150 patients were treated with oxygen and 141 other patients given a placebo consisting of ordinary air. Among the 150 patients in the oxygen treatment group, 109 of them were free from headaches 15 minutes after treatment. Among the 141 patients given the placebo, just ordinary air, 36 were free from headaches 15 minutes after treatment. <laughs> Interesting. Use a 5% significance level to test a claim that the oxygen treatment is effective. So um, what we're saying here is that we should have a smaller number of headaches, a smaller uh, proportion of headaches in the treatment group, the oxygen group, um, than in the placebo, the control group. So we're looking for P sub 1 being greater than uh, it says that it's effective. Okay, so P sub 1 being greater than uh, P sub 2, and that means that our null is that where they're equal. So we've got null there equal, null there equal, null there equal. And if their difference is going to be greater than zero, then the opposite of that, logical opposite of that, is um, less than or equal. So we will have the um, less than right there. So uh, A for that choice. And then we'll calculate the test statistic. I actually want to see if I was doing the test and I wanted to use StatCrunch, I wonder if I could just put all my pieces in here. Try stat proportion to sample with um, summary. Number of successes. Let's see if we can catch those. Uh, 
Okay, so number of successes. Successes being having having uh, no headache or being free from a headache. So for for the treatment group, 109 were free from headaches 15 minutes after the treatment. 109. How many of them actually took it uh, or were involved? 150. For the next set, 36 were free from headaches out of a group of 141. Okay, and so this is stated differently than we stated ours, but this essentially says that P1 equals P2 for the null because it's saying that the difference of their uh, proportions is zero. And we are saying that um, it's going to be, you know, it's effective, so it's supposed to be better than. And if it's better than the opposite of better than, it's going to be less than. So their difference would be less than compute. <clears throat> I'm hoping this is going to give us our test statistic uh, right here, 8.03. And we want to go to two decimals. So we'll leave it at 8.04. It's pretty high. So our p-value then pretty tiny. Oh, sorry, the other way because we're doing a left tail test, right? So it's essentially 100%. That p-value is definitely greater than uh, the alpha 5%. So we will fail to reject the null. And so our final conclusion is going to be, since in this case our claim is effectiveness, I need to write this out, I'm sorry about that, just a sec. Okay, so um, our claim is the oxygen treatment group, or the oxygen treatment is effective. So that is that this ratio should be higher than this ratio. The logical opposite of that is that it is less than or equal to it, like worse or no change. This one contains the, the equality, which is the same as saying that their difference is zero, so our null is actually uh, coming from this statement, and our alternative is coming from the claim, which means that uh, we actually want to switch this here. I'm glad I wrote it out. We want we want this one right here. And I'm going to make sure that I run that test in the right direction now. Options, edit. Uh, we want it to go this way. So compute. Okay, test statistic turns out to be the same. P-value, though, turns out to be very small. Essentially zero for us. So the p-value greater than? Nope, the p-value is less than. So we will reject the null. And if we're rejecting that, that there is no difference between the, the, the group's results, then essentially we're rejecting that, um, that it's ineffective. And so there is sufficient evidence to support the claim 
that it is effective. Test the claim by constructing a confidence interval. Okay, good. So if they want me to do that, I can just go back to options, edit, change this to a confidence interval, uh, 95%. I'm sorry, 90% because you need to have a 5% uh, in each tail. So let me readjust that. That's, that's the equivalent uh, way to run a hypothesis test, uh, to run a confidence interval comparative to a hypothesis test with significance level of a single tailed test where it's all, all the areas in one side. So in this case, it's a right tailed test and all the area is in the right and the, there is a five, significant level of 5%, so it's gonna have 5% there. So to, to um, correlate these, we want the confidence interval to be 90%, so when we split it, you know, the, the tails, each side's gonna get 5%. Okay, so our lower limit is this do a copy paste and they want three decimals our upper limit then and you can do this when you're doing the final too because when you open stack crunch you can do the copy paste like I did what's the conclusion based on the confidence interval because the confidence interval limits um, do not include zero it appears the two cure rates are not equal. Remember how to think about that. If they were actually equal, then you'd be saying essentially that it was zero. But it doesn't include zero, so they're not equal. Uh, because the confidence interval limits include only positive values, it appears that the cure rate is higher for the uh, oxygen treatment group than for the placebo. In other words, that it's effective. Based on the results, is the oxygen treatment effective? The results suggest the oxygen treatment is effective for curing cluster headaches. I'm going to try to make these videos a little. This one's already at 13 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and submit these. See if we uh, got those right. We got the first one right. That was just doing the requirements. And let's see what happened here on the second one. Oh, I'm sorry. This was supposed to be three decimals. It's going to happen if you're tired. So make sure you're well rested before the final. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm doing this late at night. But anyway, so the rest of the arguments were all there. You know, if it's a, your final and it's making a big difference, showing me something like this after your final's over, you know, you can email it even after the grade is posted. And I'll take that into consideration. And if it makes a grade, di grade change difference, I'll make the adjustment. All right, so that's this video of questions 26, 27, both from chapter 9.